Hello, my name is Keith Spaulding. I am the Bray KnifeGate Valve Product Manager, and I'm here to walk you through the simple steps of replacing the wear components of our Series 762 slurry valve. Please be sure you have read through and understand the Series 762 IOM and are following your company's safety procedures throughout this process. To begin, the valve must be placed in the open position prior to removing it from the pipeline. This will prevent possible damage to the retainer flanges and hardware. Once the valve is removed from the pipeline and cleaned, secure it in the vertical position as necessary to prevent it from falling. Inspect the valve and all of its components for wear and damage. I will go into the inspection of each part in more detail later in this video. First, Remove the retainer flange cap screws following a star pattern from valve side one. If there is suspect damage to the sleeves and or retainer flanges, now is a good time to mark these items with inlet and outlet sides and the 12 o'clock position. This will help engineering better evaluate the damage if a review is required. It may be necessary to only loosen the last few cap screws to make it easier to disassemble. The retainer flanges are elastomer with heavy internal metal substrates. They ensure the necessary compression is evenly distributed around the sleeves. Inspect the retainer flange for wear and damage. If the metal substrate is visible, or if there is excessive wear in the bore ID, replace the retainer flange. Be sure to replace it with the proper material configuration. The elastomer coated retainer flange will always match the sleeve material. Next, remove the second retainer flange cap screws following a star pattern. Inspect the retainer flange for wear and damage just as you did with the first one. Both retainer flanges are now removed. At this time, it is easiest to mark the sleeves as previously noted if you want Bray Engineering to perform additional analysis on the sleeve wear or damage. It is now time to remove the sleeves. If they do not easily slide out due to a buildup of media, use a tool to dislodge them from the body. Take care not to damage the valve bore ID. Now, inspect the valve bore ID for wear or damage. Should excessive wear or damage be seen, it is recommended to replace, not repair, the valve body. Clean the bore ID from media buildup so that reassembly of the sleeves later can be accomplished. It is now time to remove the top works from the valve. Begin by removing the hardware securing the clevis to the gate. Check the clevis and hardware for damage. Replace as needed.
Be sure the top works is properly supported before removing the upper body bolts that secure the top works in place. Lift and place the top works assembly off to the side. Alternately, for small valves, it is also possible to swing the top works out of the way by keeping one side of the body bolts loosely installed and rotating it away from the gate as illustrated here. You then have access to the gate and secondary seal without having to completely remove the top works. With the top works removed, it is now time to remove the gate and replace the secondary seal. If the gate does not easily pull out, begin by removing the secondary seal retainer plate hardware. Now, pull the gate upwards and out of the secondary seal. With the gate removed, do a complete inspection of the gate, including both faces and the tapered knife edge. Any type of wear or damage, such as scratches, dents, or bends, should be repaired. If repair is not possible, replace the gate. Even the smallest damage will cause premature wear and sleeve failure. Contact your Bray Knife Gate Valve product specialist if you have any questions regarding gate damage. Next, remove the secondary seal retainer plate that holds the secondary seal in place. And lastly, remove the secondary seal. You'll likely have to pry the existing secondary seal out of the body. Use caution not to damage any of the valve body surfaces. Clean and inspect the secondary seal chamber. At this point, all wear parts have been removed and inspected. It is not necessary to disassemble the valve any further unless you need to clean out media that is built up inside the valve cavity. Please contact Bray for further details on doing this.
It is now time to reassemble the valve with new parts, starting with the secondary seal. Begin by using a Bray approved silicone based lubricant such as Dow 111 to coat the secondary seal chamber. This will make it easier to install the new secondary seal. Completely and generously lubricate the new secondary seal inside and out with a Bray approved lubricant. The secondary seal is designed with internal ribs to hold the lubricant and dispense it onto the gate as it cycles. A well lubricated gate ensures the sleeves will last cycle after cycle. Install the secondary seal, pressing it firmly into the chamber. Next, install the secondary seal retainer plate and hardware. Do not fully tighten the hardware yet. Lay the valve down and prepare the first sleeve for installation. For large valves, these steps can be performed with the valve in the vertical position. Generously apply the approved lubricant to the nose of the sleeve. This will reduce the friction between the gate and sleeves during operation and will help extend the life of the sleeves. Press the sleeve firmly into the valve body. Next, install the first retainer flange. Be sure to align it properly so that the bore ID of the retainer flange aligns with the bore ID of the sleeve. Adjust as needed. Loosely install the cap screws following a star pattern. Do not tighten as this will make it difficult to later install the gate and could prevent the sleeves from properly aligning inside the valve body. Check to ensure the bore IDs match. Now, turn the valve over and repeat the process by installing the sleeve, then retainer flange. Again, loosely install the cap screws following a star pattern. Once all are installed, there should be a gap between the retainer flange and the valve body at this time. The cap screws will be tightened after the gate is installed.
Next, we will install the gate. Generously lubricate the gate faces and tapered knife edge with the approved lubricant. Insert the gate into the secondary seal and press it down until the nose of the gate can be felt inside the valve bore ID. Now you can tighten the secondary seal retainer plate hardware. Lay the valve down and tighten the retainer flange cap screws following a star pattern until there is an even gap of zero to one eighth inch between the retainer flange and valve body all around. Too loose and the valve may not fit back into the pipeline. Improper installation of the retainer flanges could lead to uneven compression on the sleeves, which will lead to premature failure. Stand the valve back up, and now it's time to reinstall the top works using the body bolts.
once the body bolts are secure and the top frame is securely attached to the body housing, it is time to reattach the clevis to the gate. Lower or raise the operator as needed to align the hole in the clevis with the hole in the gate. Secure the clevis to the gate with the hardware. Now it's time to check the stroke to ensure the lockouts can be engaged and the valve will cycle properly. First, close the valve. Check that the lockout holes align with the hole in the gate and that the top of the gate is measured from the top of the valve in accordance with dimension A per table 6 in the IOM adjust as needed. It is critical that dimension A is met to be sure the gate is in the proper closed position. Now open the valve. Check that the lockout holes align and that the top of the gate is measured from the top of the valve in accordance with dimension B per table 6 in the IOM. It is critical that dimension B is met to be sure the gate is in the proper open position. Keep the valve in the open position. It is now ready to be installed back into the pipeline. 